How's everybody doing? Great. I'm just going to stand here with like a deer in the headlights. What do I do now? Um, let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer. I think that's the best thing. Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise you, God, for your goodness unto us. Lord, I ask you to please bless uh, uh, this, uh, this sermon, this, this Bible study. Lord, please bless your people here. Lord, I pray for bro Brother Gary. Please comfort him. And uh, for our pastor, Lord, in the hospital, please comfort him and help him, Lord, come back to us soon. And I do pray for uh, this week, Lord, this upcoming weekend. Please bless it. And uh, just pray, God, we can see souls saved and folks uh, added to the church even and um, people reconciled un unto you, Lord. Just please uh, be, be with the sermon. I help my speech in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I want to start out. I want to say I called pastor and, and he wanted to let you know, Brother Gary, and not that I speak for the pastor, but he, um, he said he wanted to let you know that he, he loves you and, uh, and he's sorry he can't be here. And uh, um, tonight, I want to talk about the comfort in the scriptures, comfort in the scriptures. And uh, if I can add, uh, uh, Jesus said, in, or uh, John said in John chapter 13, verse 1, we're going to be in, we're, we're going to start in Genesis, and then I thought we would study uh, comfort in the Bible. Uh, but in John 13, 1, Jesus, uh, John said, When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And I think that's a great testimony. You know, the Bible says, Let another man's lips praise thee, and not th thine own. And for a member of our church to love his wife unto the end is a great testimony. And to be, and to be holding her hand as she... As she leaves this world and departs and, and goes into glory is a wonderful testimony. And uh, praise the Lord. But uh, this word comfort, comfort, comforted, comforter, comforts, or comforteth is found about 122 times in the scriptures. And uh, Romans 15.4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And uh, so whatsoever things were, were written aforetime, talking about the Old Testament. And uh, in Genesis chapter 5, we find the first mention of the word comfort. In Genesis chapter 5, it says in verse 29, speaking of Noah, and he called his name Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work. And toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And so Noah is a comfort. People name their children uh, names that bring them comfort, that bring them joy. Uh, in Genesis 18.5, food is a comfort. Genesis 18.5, come on, preach it. What is that? Uh, Genesis 18.5, it says, uh, And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts, or your stomachs. Uh, and after that, ye shall pass on. It's being about uh, Abraham, or Abram, is it Abram or Abraham yet? But anyway, he, uh, he uh, fetches the Lord, the, the angels, a piece of bread before they go to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a comfort, right? And uh, Genesis 27, comfort, our, we can actually comfort ourselves in hatred. Think about that. Genesis 27, thinking about Esau... Jacob and Esau. Is it Jacob and Esau? I'm kind of nervous. Is it Esau? Is, 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 that, is that his brother? Or is it Esau? Thank you. E, Genesis 27, verse 42. It says, And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she went and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. So I think within all of us, there's a there's, a, there's the right kind of comfort and the bad kind of comfort, okay? What about Genesis 37, verse, uh, chapter 37, verse 35? Our family can comfort us. We can receive comfort from family. 
It says, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him after he thought he had lost Joseph. What about comfort being rejected? We need to be careful that we don't reject comfort. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, speaking about comfort, there is no comfort playbook. There's no comfort list. All right? The rules for comforting. (laughs) Just love people. Love somebody enough to go to them and comfort them. Uh, If you're filled with sorrow, to, to be open to people allowing themselves to comfort you. Uh, chapter 10 in 2 Samuel. Did I say 2 Samuel chapter 10? Yes, sir. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2. It says, Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of, of, of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And, and David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search out the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants, those same comforters, and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their, even, even to their buttocks, and sent them away, and they were sent away filled with shame. Comfort can be rejected. Uh, Friends can comfort us. The book of Job is a wonderful book, wonderful book about comfort, about bereavement, loss, suffering. Uh, The book of Job, chapter 2, in verse 11, it says, Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, uh, Eliphaz, the, Tem- the, Tem- the Temanite, and Bildad, the, the Shuite, and Zophar, the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort with him. Friends can help you, can comfort you. Uh, a great way to comfort someone is to mourn with them. Mourn with them like, like you've lost what they've lost. What about... Friends, so friends can comfort, but friends can also take away comfort. <laughs> and they can cause more sorrow and wrinkles. Wrinkles. Look at uh, Job chapter 16. Job chapter 16. The same friends, I guess they were just impatient. Job wasn't being comforted fa- fast enough. So they said, oh, he must have sinned. He must have done something wrong. And they start accusing him of unrighteousness, of sin, of hiding it. And in uh, Job chapter 16, Job says, Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. If somebody says that to you, just be quiet from then on. Just be quiet. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul, said I could heap up words against you and shake mine head at you, but I would strengthen you. That's what comfort's supposed to do. It's supposed to strengthen us. With my mouth, with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Where do we see that word? In, in the flood account, the waters were what? Assuaged. And, uh, um, where was I? Verse 6, though I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? All right? Verse 7, but now he hath made me weary, thou hast made desolate all my company, thou hast filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me, and my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face. Um, Job was kind of starting to blame God. Verse 9, He teareth me in his wrath, who hateth me. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. Look at verse 10. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. That's a, that's a, that's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. And... Uh, but Job here was not being comforted by his friends, was not being comforted. In fact, his grief was so serious that it was affecting his, his body. His sickness was affecting his health. Uh, what about God's correction bringing comfort? 
We all know uh, the 23rd Psalm. In Psalm 23, verse 4. I know the whole Psalm, but I don't know verse 4 alone. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They comfort us. And then, uh, you don't have to turn here, because I don't want you turning back and forth. I'm trying to be easy uh, on you, but just, just listen. This idea of God comforting us with correction, we find the same idea in Hebrews. Um, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So God comforts us with correction. Our fathers comfort us. A father comforts his children. Um, not only fathers, uh, but God's word brings comfort. And this is a great, I think this is a great point. God's word brings comfort. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, in verse Verse 50, it says, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. And quickened, that means to make alive. Gives us life. Gives us new, new, newness of life. Uh, look at uh, the same chapter, verse 60, verse 76. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. That's a great way to comfort somebody. It's just to be filled with kindness. Kindness unto them. Putting yourself into their shoes. Maybe even just sitting with them. Uh, embracing them. Um, maybe I'm, I'm with a man embracing a hug with a, a, another man. Not, not a man embracing a, a woman that he's not related to. Okay, but... Uh, Use some discernment there. Verse 82. Mine eyes fail for thy words, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? When is the last time that we went to the word of God and said, Lord, I need your word. I need your word to comfort me. Nothing else will do, but only your word. And we find comfort in the word of God and where our faith is strengthened. When was the last time we did that? Uh, what about... Apples comforting. Yeah, apples comforting. Look at Song of Solomon, chapter 2. You're all like, apples, really? He's off his rocker. In Song of Solomon, and a lot of people avoid Song of Solomon for some reason. I'm not sure why. But in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, let's just start at verse 1. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. So Jesus Christ is, a, is an apple tree. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons. Comfort me with apples. Comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. I think the best way to receive comfort is to be in love with Jesus Christ and to taste of his fruit. And uh, uh, God uh, can cause the fruit of the Spirit in your life. God's love has to do with these apples. That's a big study. I'm not going to waste a lot of time there, okay? Isaiah 61, God's will, listen, God's will is that his children be comforted. I mean, we're not, we're not only talking about comfort, we're talking about an attribute of God. We're talking about who God is. God is a God of comfort. 
Okay, and we'll talk about more, we'll talk about that more in just a sec. But Isaiah chapter 61. Let's start in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. That's who God sent. God sent, and uh, Jesus Christ fulfilled this prophecy. Uh, and listen, the gospel is called what? The, the good news? If you hear it, if you reject it, it's not so good. But, it, but uh, and that good news is it's nothing but comfort for a hopeless world, for a hopeless condition of sin, unforgiven. What about a mother's comfort? So a father's comfort, mother's also comfort in Isaiah 66. We get a great picture of, of God as, uh, as he, he, uh, he, he applies it, the prophet applies it as like a mother. In Psalm 66, uh, Psalm, Isaiah, 66, let's start in, in, in verse 12, behold, or, for thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream, then shall ye suck. Ye shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees as one whom his mother comforteth. So will I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem in this city full, filled with sin. This, this uh, city, uh, God calls it uh, Sodom at one point. Just like Sodom. It's uh, the city of violence. A city that Jesus wept over, and he likens it, and he says that God is going to comfort her like a mother comforts her children. Um, what, about, what about this? Comforters can be missing. There can be no comforters. Turn to Lamentations. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations, and uh, that's what it was. It was, it was he was lamenting. Over Jerusalem, over his people, the weeping prophet. In Lamentations chapter 1, it says this, For, for how doth, doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? This is after King Nebuchadnezzar had come and he had, he had uh, taken into captivity multitudes of people and the city was, was desolate. How has she become as a widow that she that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces? How has she become tributary? She had now she was being taxed and she was giving money to the Babylonians. She weepeth sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. Can you imagine a society? I think we're blessed now as, as we uh, have the opportunity to comfort one among us, but but there may come a day in the which a majority of us will be in tribulation. And there will be very few people to comfort us. And we'll have to go to God then. We may get to, get to that point. Look at uh, verse 17. Zion spreadeth forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. Look at uh, verse 21. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. Speaking of the prophet, all my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou wilt bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Speaking about, uh, they shouldn't be so quick, so quick to rejoice over Jeremiah's sad condition. So that's, that's, the, that's comfort in the Old Testament. But comfort is also all through the New Testament. Jesus Christ God the Son, 100% God, 100% man, God in the flesh. Listen, in Matthew 5, 4, he says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. 
They shall be comforted. It's a promise. Come on, participate here, okay? Look at uh, Luke chapter 16. There's comfort in heaven. There's comfort in heaven. There's comfort for those who depart this world and are presently in heaven. Luke chapter 16, verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus' evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Can you say that? Can you say that about your soul? Do you have absolute confidence in, in your soul right now in the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood for your sins? Has he purchased you? Are you his? Do you have hope of an eternal comfort with the Son of God? What about the Holy Spirit? He's also called what? The Comforter. In John chapter 14. In John chapter 14. And, and I, I admit, i got to remind myself of, these, of this. You know, he's not just going to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. He's also going to comfort you. John 14, verse 16. Jesus says, and I will pray the Father. Well, look at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you how long? Forever. A comforter. Your personal comforter, which just happens to be your creator, will abide with you forever. He will comfort you forever. Forever. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He'll comfort you forever. If you keep his commandments and love him and, and seek after him. And you're his. Uh, look at verse 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We have a great God. God is a comforter. He is uh, the comforters of comforters. What about Acts chapter 9? The Holy Ghost comforts. We saw he's called the comforter. Let's see him in action. Acts chapter 9, in verse 31, it says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified in walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. All right, there's, if there's one thing we need to realize is God wants us to be comforted. He wants us to, be, uh, to have peace and joy. He, he wants, he doesn't, God's not promising you uh, wealth and prosperity, but, he, but what about spiritual wealth and spiritual prosperity? Comfort. What about preaching? Preaching ought to be bring comfort. We forget this. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I, f I forget this. Preaching needs to be on sin. Yes, it does. Amen. Preaching needs to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Yes, it does. Sometimes it needs to comfort as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3. But he that prophesieth, 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 speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. 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 So, what's on your heart? What are you dealing with? Why are you dealing with it? Yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't be, you shouldn't. The whole reason. These, these scriptures are in here is so we can go to the Word of God. And we have them. They're promises. Uh, look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians has actually the most uh, instances where comfort is used in the book of 2 Corinthians. Let's look at this idea. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all 
Comfort. He is the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. That's who he is. That's what he's like. You want to be like Jesus? Comfort somebody. You want to be like Christ? Go to God for your comfort. Find comfort in the Word of God. He comforts us. We're comforted, listen, so we can comfort others. Look at the very next verse. Who comforteth, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Did you ever think the reason you're going through what you're going through is so you can be used of God to comfort somebody else in the future? By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Let me read that again. Who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I mean, and, and we have a great Savior. We can identify with him. Think of what he went through. What did he go through for us? The cross. The uh, uh, sweating dr great drops of blood in the Garden of Get Gethsemane. Uh, the, the trials. The, the cruel trials. The mocking. The, the scourging. The beating. The plucking his beard out. Um, the nails. The shame being crucified uh, between two thieves. His mother had to see that. His uh, disciples uh, forsook him. Think about what he did for us and how much he suffered and how we can, as we study him, can receive comfort. He's the God of all comfort. Think about what he did on the cross. In his dying hours, he, he prayed unto God. He saved a sinner on the cross. He brought comfort to somebody else. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. How comforting is that for a thief to hear, hear that? He is a God of all comfort. And we are to comfort those, listen, who repent of sin even. When somebody repents, we ought to comfort them. Second, in the same chapter, in chapter 2, the same book, chapter 2, ver, ver, verse 7. Well, let's start in verse 6. Paul here is speaking about the man who uh, the church had to discipline in the first book. And they did it. They obeyed their apostle. And then this man got right. And in uh, verse 6, it says, Sufficient to, to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many, so that contrarywise, ye ought, other, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Boy, that takes, that's a hard pill to swallow. But we need to reach out to folks that sin and who, who come back and repent and comfort them. And, come, and we need to be of a ready mind to comfort someone. Lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. We can be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. There's people that never get over what they've been through. They never get over it. We need to comfort folks. We need to be ready to, be, to comfort them. Look at 1 Thessalonians. This will be the last verse I share. In 1 Thessalonians... We have a great comfort, a blessed hope. Uh, we have a glorious resurrection on the horizon. And it needs to be preached. It needs to be talked about. We need to remind ourselves. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the, under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, because of all this, comfort one another with these words. These words, we're to speak these words and preach these words and encourage one another and comfort one another with these words because it's our blessed hope. Satan can't touch this. The world can't take it from us. Our flesh has no lot in this matter. Our blessed hope. And one day each of us is going to participate in that rapture. I know you, 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 you don't even think about it, but we all will be in the rapture one way or another. We'll be caught together in the, to meet the Lord in the air, to meet him in the clouds. It's not the second coming, too. It's not the second coming. It's different. It happens before the great tribulation, not during the great tribulation. You can't put a date on the rapture. It's imminent. It could happen at any moment. It could happen right now. And we, we should comfort one another with these words. All right? So that's all I have. So are you comforting one another? Are you, are you the type to reach out to someone and comfort them? Are you going through a trial, through tri tribulation? Have you lost something, someone, and you're mourning over that person? Comfort comes from many different places, and we need to comfort one another. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise you, God, for your goodness unto us. Lord, I ask you to please bless uh, this church. Lord, please be with Brother Gary, Lord, and uh, help us as a, as a church. Uh, Lord, I think of Pastor De Delotel and his father, Lord. God, help us as a church to comfort one another. Lord, and to encourage one another and love one another enough just to sit by one another and spend time with one another, get to know one another, and be a real family, Lord, a church family, Lord. And just please help our pastor. Comfort him, Lord. It's got to be excruciating to be away from your church family, from your people, from uh, what God has ordained you and called you to do, Lord. And just please improve his health and help them to be back w with us very, very soon. And I pray for these special requests, Lord. Please bless these folks and uh, help our church, God, to please you and to uh, glorify you and magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.